Thank you. I think a visit to the Incan suspension bridges is now on my bucket list, although my fear of heights, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a little bit tough. Um, I did, one thing I forgot to mention before John got up is that John and John have a little bet going today as to, <laughs> as to who's gonna get the most applause, so keep that in mind. <laughs> They're actually good friends, I'm totally giving them a hard time. <laughs> And now John Bush has his work cut out for him. <laughs> um, a, a quick little story. I, the first time I went to Holland, uh, I was not married to Ali at the time, but I, we were visiting his family. And his, I went with my future mother-in-law to the cheese shop, and she said to me, she was being very polite, she said, Karen, you know, what kind of cheese do you like? What, what would you like us to get? And I, of course, said immediately in my American New York accent, oh, I'll have some, ha some Gouda, please. And both she and the cheese shop owner and whoever else was in there kind of looked at me and gave me a smile. And, they, and she said, you know, that's great, Karen, but if you're going to become a member of the family, you kind of need to learn how to say it right. And the proper pronunciation is chowda. So um, since then, I've learned a little bit more about cheese, but I'm very happy to say that Joost Elfers is here today to give all of us a little bit of a, of a, um, uh, you know, a, a little story about cheese and to tell us a little more and help us learn something about it. I'm Dutch, but I'm an expat, and I dream about my identity. Who am I? What does it mean to be Dutch? And I come up with these strange stories to prove my identity. And one of my stories is with this wheel of Dutch cheese. Here it is. We in Holland eat every day sandwiches for lunch with cheese on it. But then the drama starts. <laughs> you saw the wheel of cheese is round. But we Dutch are really square. <laughs> Why would a culture of square people produce such a problem? <laughs> that is because we use roundness to present ourselves. But underneath, we are capitalist, greedy, fast. We earn pennies by the billions by never spending it on yourself, on somebody else, or reinvest. You sit on it for centuries. There is a class of round people, they are subsidized just to promote that we are liberal, social democratic, <laughs> that everything is okay in Holland. I am one of these, we are, we go to Montessori schools, 500 of them. We really play, we do not work, we are subsidized by a business machine already in place since 1600. Every morning uh, after school, uh, my brother went to the bread store for a loaf of bread. What we would eat the next day, because it was not good for your stomach to eat fresh bread, although a doctor's family ate always fresh bread, and I never understood that we ate always old bread, but okay, that was a belief. I went to the cheese store, and the cheese store is the milkman. And the milkman has a wheel of cheese, he has many of them. He cuts with a string the cheese in half. 
and then with a big knife in a quarter. So first, the wheel goes in half, and then the case goes to a quarter. Now, the social democratic fairness dictates wedges, and he always puts his knife here in the center, and he says, how much do you want? Do you want a pound, six ounce, seven ounce? And he knows exactly the shape, the size, and the weight. He always gives an ounce, he, he looks at you, he always gives 50 grams more, 60. Is it okay, he says, is that mm, okay? <laughs> this is the democratic model until upper class family comes in and they say, Give me a flat piece, a plot stuck. And the milkman is forced to go here and give a flat piece. <laughs> then another family member comes and say, I want also a flat piece. The milkman hates that, but he has to give it to our also his better clients. There he goes. Then he gets somebody, in, um, and somebody who is on welfare, who wants something, who has no social standing. He immediately gives her or him a piece that is cut here. And they stand high up like that. Terrible, not allowed on the, on the lunch table like that, because the wedge has to look really long, nicely, exactly perfect, like that. That is right. <laughs> so the upper class forces the others into wrong positions. <laughs> so then you get here the, the, the flat piece, so that is also That is, I always thought that we had a flat piece because my father was a designer and it looked just neat. No, it's just that he came from a certain class and he dictated a flat piece on the uh, lunch table. Then we went home and the real trouble started. Because you have a father and mother, you have children, there is maybe a guest, and the children, here's the piece of cheese, the children hollow. <laughs> and the father is the straightener, the rechtmaker. He cuts it here in, and he makes a cut here because this is the crust, and he straightens it, and then he has this weird piece. <laughs> he has the right to eat it alone, there's a lot of cheese, and it gives him also the right to yell at the children. But what the hell is his problem? <laughs> the problem is that he is squaring the circle. That he, from here, trains the children. That they have to stay, although it is all round, has to stay as square as possible. To be as Dutch as possible. <laughs> although, the father doesn't know that he, do, that he has to do it. It is also automatic. I gave this speech in Holland. People were just on the floor of laughter because millions of these families had that, uh, the same experience. <laughs> How does that end? I think it went on from 16th 
1865 to 1965, and then it stopped. No straightener, no yelling at the, at, at the lunch table. The whole problem vanished in a matter of a few years. How is that possible? First of all, you got pre-cut cheese. Disgusting for the real, <laughs> but it happened. Pre-cut cheese in the supermarket started to enter the Dutch cheese culture. And the father was divorced and ran away with his secretary. <laughs> the Dutch are clean. The cheese is on the table, on the floor, or on a wooden plank, and the crust is up. That's the Dutch position, because we are so proud that we are so clean, you can put the cheese anywhere. <laughs> the French, this is the French position. In France, it is, stands always on a crust. You also never touch it. You, you take a piece with your knife, with the pointer, you put it on your plate. When Dutch people go on vacation, they drive 15 hours to reach Spain, never to stop, because maybe they have to spend some money on food or maybe a hotel. They, there are huge crashes around Lyon when they are so tired, they are always filled with Dutch people in the hospital. No. No. <laughs> if they then stop in a French restaurant, there is a tableau with French cheeses on it. That is for the whole restaurant. Everybody takes a little piece until <laughs> it arrives with a Dutch family. They eat the whole thing. <laughs> I end my story with stories of my parents because I am from 46, I was born after the war. There was always enough cheese, but in the depression of the 30s, they were very poor. And they were telling me stories that the slice of bread is cheap, the, the piece of cheese is expensive. So you get a slice of bread. And you had a little piece of cheese. And it, the name is schuifkaas, shuffle cheese. You bite here a piece and you push it up here. <laughs> and <laughs> by the time you're here, there's just a little piece to eat the rest. This is about Dutch identity.